Hi, my name is Bob Miller, and this is my new Ford Maverick. It is my intention to flat tow the Maverick behind my 2017 Unity Leisure Travel Van. I use an RVI3 braking system and Tire Tracker Tire Monitor. In this video, we are going to discuss flat towing the Ford Maverick, the RVI3 braking system, as well as flat towing in general. The Maverick is not the first towed for the Unity. Actually, there have been two others, neither of which started out behind the Unity. A 2013 Jeep Wrangler Sport started out behind a Winnebago Via, which was on a Sprinter chassis. The Sport weighed in at about 3,900 pounds. The Winnie was replaced by a 36-foot Thor Palazzo on a Freightliner chassis. We thought we needed something bigger. A new and heavier Toad came into the picture as well. My 2015 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Hard Rock Rubicon weighs in at about 4,500 pounds. The Palazza had to go, too big. It took about a year to obtain the Unity. I still had both Jeeps, but both had their limitations. The Unity finally arrived. The 2013 was more the right weight for the Unity Sprinter, but the back seat's only use was for the dog because he was the only one that could get back there. There was hardly any cargo space either. The Rubicon was a much more useful vehicle, but that came with a lot more weight. Actually, too much weight for the Unity if you went by the book, though it did pull it just fine even through the mountains. Enter the Ford Maverick. It weighs in at about 3,700 pounds. Weight-wise, it was even better than the Sport. As for cargo space, it was even better than the Rubicon. The Maverick does have some drawbacks. First, it was one of those vehicles you had to start and run through the gears periodically, every morning before you start and at least every six hours during the day. The Jeeps had no such limitations, but I did not think that was a deal break. Secondly, you could not travel over 70 miles an hour. That was no problem for me either, as I usually only travel about 65 anyway. Lastly, it had to be the hybrid to pull it. I'm not a big fan of electric cars. Once I realized there was no plug-in required, I was okay with that. I have a video on how I found my Maverick if you're interested. So let's talk about flat towing in general and about flat towing the Maverick in particular. First, the Maverick has to be set up to tow. That means installing a towing base plate. There are two major brands, Blue Ox and Roadmaster. Both the Jeeps are set up as Blue Ox, and I already have a Blue Ox tow bar, so that was my first inclination. That was until I saw a picture of a Blue Ox on a Maverick. It required some major cutting on the front bumper. Here is my Maverick before a base plate was installed. Here is what a Blue Ox base plate looks like installed on a Maverick. Notice the cutaways to the bumper for the tag assemblies. I would have been highly upset to unknowingly find out that surgery was done to my new truck. To compare, here is what the Roadmaster installed on my Maverick looks like. I think I made the right choice. The base plate provides a way to attach your coach to the tow and a place to connect safety cables between the two. It is the link for electricity to your taillights and to keep the coach battery charged. If your tow should become detached from the coach, a breakaway system will activate and stop your tow. 
To hook up, you install tag assemblies into your base plate. These are Blue Ox tags on the left and Roadmaster tags on the right. Notice the ends are entirely different. You insert the tags into the base plate, then turn them until they snap into place. This provides a place for the tow bar arms to attach. For the Blue Ox tow bar to hook up to the Roadmaster tags, I had to replace the ends of the tow bar arms. I always leave the tow bar on the Unity. It is locked on. I have a large, full-width mud flap that keeps rocks off the tow. You need space to hook up your tow to the RV. I am fortunate that I live on a dead-end street and can hook up in front of my house. My safety cables, electrical cables, and breakaway cables all remain hooked up to the coach unless I am going somewhere without the tow. For a short distance, such as parking or hooking up, I'm comfortable they will stay in place. I would never drive a distance with them still attached. Once the RV is in place, you move the toad in behind it. You want it approximately centered. The tow bar arms move in and out until locked in place. The toad must be close enough that the tow bar arms can reach the tags, but not so close that you cannot get them to attach. Trial and error will get you the right distance. Time and practice will make it easier. Install the tags into the base plate. Slide the tow bar arm out until it reaches the tag in the base plate. Run the pin through the tag and the tow bar arm. Run the spring clip lock through the tag and the pin and lock it into place. Attach the safety cables to the hooks in the base plate. Many Roadmaster tow bars come with the safety cables built in. The hooks on the end must be smaller than the standalone safety cables I have because mine would not go all the way in. I was not happy with that. I purchased some heavy duty quick links to remedy the problem. I already had some connected to the trailer hitch to make it easier to hook up the safety cables through the mud flap. Next, hook up the electric cable and the breakaway cable.
Now you need to set the tow bar arms into the lock position. To do so, gently back up your tow. You want to pull the tow bar arms out until at least one of them locks into place. It is not necessary to lock them both at this time as the second one will lock into place when you pull away. The single arm will hold your tow stationary when you put it into towing mode. Towing mode is different on every vehicle. I am not going to try to explain how to do so for every vehicle. I will mention Jeep Wranglers briefly and then go into greater detail on the Ford Maverick. On a Jeep Wrangler, you tow it in part after putting the four-wheel drive universal into neutral. You can tow it as fast as you want and for as long as you want. That is what makes Jeeps great to use as tows. The Maverick is a little more complicated. You have to put the vehicle into neutral tow. First, switch your vehicle into accessory mode. On a keyless model, you do that by pressing the start button without your foot on the brake. Next, you press the menu button on the steering wheel. Select settings. Select vehicle. Select neutral tow. And then you hold the OK button until the neutral toe engages. You must then hold your foot on the brake and put your Maverick in neutral. You are now ready to tow. Remember, you cannot drive faster than 70 miles per hour. Also, at least every six hours and at the beginning of every day, you must start your Maverick and lubricate the drive system. Next, you must install your auxiliary braking system. 49 out of 50 states and all of Canada require an auxiliary braking system. Toads come with either vacuum brakes or active brakes. Make sure you know which you have. A Jeep Wrangler is a vacuum brake. Ford Mavericks are active brakes. If you try to apply vacuum braking to an active braking system, you're gonna smoke the tires. I'm not going to try to explain all the braking systems. There are many good ones out there. I will address the RVI-3 that I use. The RVI-3 comes with a tablet called the Command Center. With the Command Center, you can monitor activity of your brake and tire monitor system if you have theirs. You must make sure the brake settings are correct. The Command Center is what you use to do that as well. On the command center, select RBI brake. The Maverick has active brakes. Therefore, I have my brakes set to active with a PSI of 10. You could feel it braking at 5 PSI, but 10 felt much better. Now that the settings are correct, it's time to install the brake. The RBI 3 sets on the floor of your vehicle in front of the brake pedal. In the Maverick, you must remove any floor mats for the RVI to have a sufficient place behind it to rest against. The arm attaches to the pedal and then the unit slides back to find a resting position with support. The brake must have an always on power supply. There is not a good source for the power within reach on the Maverick, so you will need to supply one. Mine is installed here and is out of the way when not in use. The brake has audio instructions for further setup.
Before you are ready to roll, you must check your lights. Turn the coach on and hit a turn signal. Then move to the back and make sure the toad's tail lights are also working. I always check both sides. I have tried to come up with a way to handle the need to exercise my Maverick every six hours without unhooking the RBI brake. I have failed. I plan on starting the Maverick and running through the drive in reverse every night when I pull in, even if I have done so sometime that afternoon. That is probably a good thing because I have been known to forget to unplug the brake in the evening when pulling the Jeeps. If I have to disconnect the brake, then I will definitely be unplugged. There will be no reason for unhooking the tow bar unless I have to go someplace. To exercise the Maverick, remove the brake. Put your foot on the Maverick's brake pedal, start the vehicle, and put it in park. That will remove it from neutral tow. Place it in drive for a while and then move it to reverse. If you're moving on, don't forget to put the truck back into neutral tow before you go. There you have it, my new rig all set up. I hope you have happy travels. Thanks for joining me.